Hey guys, Nurse Mike here and welcome to SimpleNursing.com. Check out our brand new app and get access to our new pharmacology and med search mastery courses. Plus, a massive quiz bank loaded with detailed rationales to test your knowledge. Join for free. Click the link in our description below. So first up, let's cover antiplatelets like clopidogrel and aspirin, aka salicylate. Now guys, let the name help you here. Antiplatelets are just that. They're antiplatelet. They lower platelet aggregation, so we have a less chance of them sticking together and clogging the arteries. So just think AC for aspirin and clopidogrel, brand name Plavix, like AC for anti-clogging of the arteries, preventing platelets from forming clots. Now the indication is mainly for clot prophylaxis, basically meaning clot prevention. So guys, in heart and brain clot, like an MI or CVA prevention, narrowed arteries like ACS in the heart, or a TIA in the brain, or even PAD in the extremities, or even prevention after a stent or bypass, preventing the reocclusion of that artery there. Now the HESI key term, we use post-PCI, that percutaneous coronary intervention. Fancy words for cath lab to clear the clot. Again guys, AC is aspirin and clopidogrel. AC for anti-clot. Now the mechanism of action, guys, it's very simple. They prevent the platelets from aggregating together or clumping up. Sort of like spreading them out like a bunch of plates. Now the key points before giving, we always assess. So the key numbers here is hemoglobin levels. So anything less than seven, just think you might be sending your patient to heaven. Huge bleed risk there. And also platelets, normally between 150 to 400. So just think anything less than 150 is very iffy. Always notify the HCP. But less than 50 is very risky. These meds should not be decreasing platelet levels. Guys, this is known as thrombocytopenia, basically meaning a huge risk for bleeding. So common questions on exams, they'll give you a scenario of a platelet count about 75,000 or less than 40 guys. What's the priority nursing action? Always the priority is to hold the drug and question the prescription and then notify the HCP. And guys, don't let the NCLEX trick you. Aspirin and Capitagrel think platelets, not INR, not PTT. That's for anticoagulants in our next section. Now, Hesse had an exit question about aspirin. They were asking about contraindication for patients with hypoprothrombinemia. That's just fancy words for low clotting factors. So we just hold the aspirin. Now, as far as aspirin toxicity, this is a big focus on safety. So HESI and ATI exit exams had a few questions on this. So activated charcoal was the number one drug for aspirin toxicity. Now, the key term here is initial treatment of salicylate or aspirin toxicity. It binds with aspirin to block the absorption by the small intestine. And the key signs of aspirin toxicity is number one, tinnitus, the ringing of the ears, and also hyperventilation. So guys, we notify the HCP immediately. Now, Kaplan mentioned this as a priority finding. Given a scenario about a patient on aspirin who is hyperventilating, indicating it could be a salicylate poisoning or aspirin poisoning. An ATI question about long-term aspirin administration. Priority assessment is assess for tinnitus. And a very last side note here, tachycardia and hypotension are not signs of toxicity. This could actually indicate a bleed. So just be careful. Now for glycoprotein or GP receptor inhibitors, we have alciximab, also an antiplatelet given for prevention of platelet aggregation. But guys, here's the big difference. It's mainly used after cardiac procedures like a heart cath, or coronary stent placement, where we want to prevent vessel reocclusion. Now, adverse effects, guys, just like aspirin, but way more severe. So we still have thrombocytopenia and bleeding. Now, the big nursing care, common exam questions ask actions the nurse should implement. So key terms to write down here. Number one is assessment of hemoglobin and platelets. Again, hemoglobin below seven sends your patient to heaven and platelets below 150 is very iffy. But anything less than 50, guys, is very risky. 
always question any prescription or order for any blood thinner with platelets that low. And guys, we assess for bleeding here. We report to the HCB these key terms. Red-tinged urine, which could be hematuria, or basically blood in the urine. Or dark, tarry stools. That key term came up a lot on various quiz banks. Or it came up as black or bloody stools, basically blood in the bowel. We also monitor groin insertion site for signs and symptoms of bleeding after a PCI. And third, place the client on a cardiac monitor to monitor for ECG changes. And guys, lastly, for no needles, no new IVs or IMs during or after administration, unless it's absolutely necessary, which on the NCLEX, it's never really absolutely necessary. Guys, serious blood thinners are serious bleeding. Thanks for watching. For our full video and new quiz bank, click right up here to access your free trial. And please consider subscribing to our YouTube channel. Last but not least, a big thanks to our team of experts helping us make these great videos. All right, guys, see you next time.